Hey guys, it's John from Real Blue Custom Rods. You ever wonder how many different types of grip materials there are out there for your fishing rods? Um, I'm sure you have. I'm sure you probably can name uh, almost all of them right off the top of your head. Um, but when you start getting into the different, let's take cork. When you start getting into the different categories of cork or the grades of cork, it, sometimes it can be very, very confusing. Um, and when you build custom rods, whether you're a custom rod manufacturer, uh, whether you're building your own rod as a hobbyist, it's something that you want to do, you've never built one before and you want to make one, or you've built few, you know, a few or several, um, it doesn't really matter. It's like the, the, the problem is, is trying to figure out, hey, what's, what's the right material um, that I want to use? And, and some of that stuff is given, right? Salt rod, you know, if I'm using a salt rod, or I'm making a salt rod, I wanna have something that's gonna be like an EVA grip or something, right? Just because I want I want a material, grip material to be able to withstand uh, the demands of the application of fishing that I'm doing, right? But, um, you know, in the pursuit of finding the right handle material for some builds that I was doing, um, I was fortunate enough um, to come across Scott Whitmore and his father out at Pascari Cork uh, here in uh, Washington State, up in the Port Angeles area, um, they're a uh, veteran-owned company. Uh, both of them uh, are former Air Force pilots, and uh, I reached out to Scott and wanted to basically get smart a little bit, smarter on on cork handles um, and and just different types of handle material as well. And it, uh, we. I wanted to do this, it was kind of right as the COVID-19 pandemic was happening. Um, so what we decided to do is work together um, because of social distancing and the stay at home, save lives, uh, stuff that came out and was put out by the Washington state and the rest of the country basically. Um, we decided that I would shoot my part, which is happening right now. Uh, and then Scott and his father would shoot their part, which you're getting ready to watch. Um, and this is probably one of the best rundowns uh, on handle material uh, it's mostly focused on cork and EVA but I'm telling you um, it's 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 awesome cork EVA how to choose EVA um, choosing the types of cork that you want to do the quality of cork you know what are those categories um, the true rundown of you know double triple you know quad a it, is that really a thing um, you know, and, uh, you know, Scott's going to shed some light on that. Uh, and then we'll talk about, uh, some cork derivatives, some different types of corks that are out there, uh, you know, recycled type materials, uh, and then agglomerated cork, which I think is a great material personally. Um, and that's what, uh, I ended up going, uh, going with, uh, based off of my education, um, on, on the cork material that I received from Scott, um, and just some of his, um, his guidance. And, and understanding what it was I was trying to build. So you're going to see a lot of agglomerated cork on some of my products um, that I'm doing, especially fly rods. Unless a customer asks for a carbon um, a carbon handle or something, I, you're going to see a lot of agglomerated cork. Uh, that being said, stay tuned. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you get a lot out of it. It's probably worth taking notes if you're not too smart on cork handles. Um, I, I definitely took a lot of my notes, uh, a lot of notes watching it. Um, so hope you enjoy. Hey, and uh, before I let you go, hit the like button. Uh, and if you like the products that we're doing, uh, hit the subscribe button. That way you get those notifications every time I, uh, one of our new uh, videos or content comes out uh, on a Monday. All right, enjoy. Hi, I'm Scott Whitmore with Piscari Cork. We are a veteran owned American manufacturing company specializing in uh, fishing rod grips. Today we're gonna go over some fishing rod handle basics. Okay, we're going to talk about a variety of fishing rod handles uh, materials today. Um, we'll start with cork. Cork obviously is a classic. Um, it's still extremely dominant in fly rods and it maintains a staple as, a, as an extremely uh, effective um, fishing rod handle material. Uh, next we have EVA. EVA stands for ethyl vinyl acetate. You see EVA a lot in uh, offshore and inshore rods. It, uh, stands up very well to salt water and puts up with going in and out of those rod holders um, for offshore rods really well. Um, it's also really popular in southern um, bass uh, fishing rods. We have some other materials that we're going to talk about here in a minute. 
key to choosing good EVA is uh, knowing what shore hardness that you're working with. It's sometimes referred to as uh, durometer. Uh, durometer is a hardness that uh, is um, dictated by the size of the bubbles inside of the EVA structure. EVA stands for uh, ethyl vinyl acetate. It's counterintuitive, but what you want in an EVA grip is actually a high durometer uh, rating. Uh, soft EVA might feel nice at first blush, but it's going to be problematic over the long term for two reasons. First and foremost, the soft EVA is not going to transmit the vibration from your line to the rod to the grip and to your hand, as well as a high durometer, a nice stiff EVA. And the other thing is, over time, a soft EVA just doesn't hold up very well. It's going to break down much faster than a, um, than a stiff grip. Uh, so we, here at Piscari, we use a 70 durometer EVA on our grips. It's great for grips. It's great for butt caps. It's a good all-around, all-purpose um, fishing rod handle material. All right, there's a couple of things you want to pay attention to when you're looking for quality cork grips. Uh, the first is clarity, and this has to do with uh, the number and the size of the inclusions in the cork. Uh, the way that you're going to see inclusions manifested on a cork grip are going to be along the outside. It's going to look like tiger stripes or stripes uh, along your cork grip. And then if you're looking at the cork ring, you're going to see uh, pockets inside of, the, inside of the cork ring there. A high quality uh, cork grip is going to have very tight and um, also fewer numbers of inclusions versus a, a lower grade of cork. The bigger the inclusions and the more there are, uh, the lower quality of cork you're dealing with. Uh, on your grip, you're going to see that as large inclusions on the side of your grip. A higher quality grip is going to have a nice, smooth, even cork um, finish to it as opposed to the fill that you're going to see inside of these. The other characteristic you want to pay attention to is color. So the more um, black or dark pigment you see in cork, uh, the lower the grade of that cork. So a high um, quality cork grip is going to have a nice consistent uh, pigment to it. The more dark pigment you see in the cork, the lower uh, quality it's going to be. Okay, when we're talking about natural cork, there's really only four, maybe five actual grades of cork in terms of the, the cork industry. They only grade on five uh, tiers. Starts at B, then A, then super, then floor. Some producers uh, may use um, a grade in between super and floor called extra. Anything outside of that is an invention of the fishing industry, really. You might have heard uh, some vernacular like double or triple or quad A. These are just uh, fishing rod retailer and fishing rod manufacturers methods of trying to plus up uh, the grade of their cork. But if you're talking to anybody in the cork industry, there's really only those four, maybe five uh, categories. Everything else is pretty much just snake oil. Here are a couple of uh, other examples of neat um, cork derivatives. Uh, this is a rubber cork. All of these are made from a, uh, a recycled or a, or a waste product from cork, and it's uh, a ground up material and, and recycled to make uh, these cool accent or um, um, trim pieces. This is a high density rubber cork that you see a lot in uh, butt caps. This stuff is super tough. It can take a beating. That's why a lot of folks put it at the bottom of the rod so they can stand their rod up for storage or setting it aside in the boat. Uh, without worried about um, the bottom of their rod falling apart. Um, you see this a lot in accent pieces. These are uh, burnt, uh, mixed burnt or um, burl derivatives. You've got colored burl. I've seen, um, you know, some referred to as cactus or wave. And a lot of times this stuff is nice because it's still really lightweight. It's not as heavy as the rubber cork. Um, but it adds color and dimension to your uh, cork grip. Now, these are typically made with large um, pieces of recycled cork. Um, what we have here is what we call agglomerated cork. Uh, some folks may have heard it referred to as fine burl cork. And it's made from um, smaller grains of cork. 
Uh, in the cork industry, they consider this a higher grade of agglomerated cork um, because of the size of the grain in the material. Agglomerated cork is one of our favorite materials to work with. Um, it's um, made from all natural cork, uh, ground up in really fine bits between 0.5 and 2 millimeter pieces, and then it's uh, heat pressed together with a polyurethane glue. Uh, what we like about agglomerated cork is all of the things that you like about your natural cork grip. Um, it's water repellent, it's uh, resilient, it's extremely durable, it's a tough and lightweight material. So it's all the things that you love about your cork grip, but it excels in all the areas where natural cork falls short. So when we were talking earlier about how natural cork has inclusions, the beauty of agglomerated cork is there's no, um, there's no pits, no cracks, um, which a lot of um, manufacturers will fill uh, with a fill material. This is not going to fall out. It's gonna stay a nice, clean, consistent aesthetic cast after cast. If you would like to know more about uh, agglomerated cork, you can check out our article on page 54 of the March edition of Tackle Trade World. And uh, also check us out at PiscariCork.com or on Instagram at PiscariCork.